This is Trans Africa Radio. And in the studio, my hashtag mentor guest, Tiro Mosete. He is a Cosmos Sexiest Man 2017. He is a model. He was in construction, a former athlete, and a host of other things. He joins me in the studio. You probably have seen him in your eyes video with uh, Black Coffee and Shakina. And he's coming into the studio to chat with us all about chasing dreams. He's uh, changed his career several times and now is uh, possibly one of the most coveted men in the world. Uh, all the guys that are listening right now possibly hate him because, you know, your girlfriend, she's probably uh, drooling over his photos on the Graham. Small town boy with big dreams. Okay. Yes. Um, so, Clarksdorp, grew up there, it's home. Um, I moved to Pretoria, grade 11, for two years. So I, um, I got a, a scholarship from the University of Pretoria Tech Sport High School, yeah. where I trained as an athlete okay. to, to become a future Olympian. Okay. And then I got injured, and then I was in a little bit of a rut, but then I just decided that I w- like, I don't want to let um, the story of my life be dictated or be singled out by one event that Tiro is an athlete. Yeah. And when he gets injured, that's where his story stops. Yeah. So I took on modeling, which was something new. But it, it, it was a suggestion from people. Yeah. So I said, okay, let me try this out. And then um, it turned out into all of this. Yeah. So this is where I currently find myself. Everyone has sort of, you know, the parental advice coming in. You need to be a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant. Um, I mean, I'm a lawyer um, for my sins and I left that industry. But I know how difficult it is to sort of make the decision to transition to a career that's not very popular. I mean, even for, for, for athletes, it's very difficult to, to, I mean, how many athletes make it out and become, you know the weight for Nikos of the world. Uh, you. you know what I mean. Yes. Um, so, what made you, when when things were crumbling around, for you to continue and look for a different avenue to apply your trade? Um, well, with me, I'm always looking for the next best thing that challenges me. Yeah. Because I, I come from a from a household where my mom and my father, my grandmother, those three people always said that if you think you can do it, yeah. go out and do it. So at the time. Um, it was just just um, pure passion for being good at anything that challenges you, because I'm a I'm a natural athlete, so I'm very competitive by nature. So my competitiveness isn't just singled down to track events and yeah. it, it's life in general. Yeah. So whatever um, I set myself out onto achieving, then like that's my event. So I do what it takes. I train myself in that event or in that. Um, part of my life to be as good as I can. Yeah, well, I mean, some people would say that it's very easy for you to be good at what you do because I mean, you're over six. You should see how tall this guy is. I mean, he towers over me, sitting down. Like I'm standing and he's sitting down, <laughs> and he's looking down at me. Um, but I mean, many people would, would would say that you know, it's 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 oh, you know, you're you're a pretty boy, you're tall, you're athletically built. Uh, it isn't that difficult. How difficult was it actually getting in one into into? Let's start with athletics. You know, with you being a, a, a sports star first. I mean, how difficult was it to maintain all of that? Um, it wasn't... like a, Okay, let's not say difficult. Um, I like to work... Like, I'm sorry. I like to work on the word I'm challenging. Okay. Yeah, because difficult means that you might fail. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So, <laughs> um, it, was, it was a challenging part of my life, but it was doable. Uh, it was very tough at the time balancing high school with sports because being at the High Performance Center, we had to wake up as early as 4 o'clock and have our morning session. Sorry, 4 o'clock when? In the morning. Like in the morning? Yes. Like a.m.? Every, every single day. Woo, would not have made it. Before school. Woo, would not have been part of that party. It's actually, it's a... It's actually nice. It's almost spiritual. 4, be, 4 a.m.? Yeah. I, I still well, you're, up, fight, you, you're hanging out with all the witches who are coming back from doing what they were doing. I still wake up at 4 to gym to this day. It's, it, it's become part of my life. Wow. Yes. Um, so you wake up at 4, you gym for 2 hours, 6 o'clock, you hit the shower, and then school starts at 8. So between 6 and 8, you're getting ready for school. Yeah. And then you go to school, you come back, and then you train at the track, and then um, you, you have supper. And then sometimes we had um, an, another session in the evening before bed, you know, just to make sure that you go to bed yeah. like really tired. Yeah, like really, really messed up. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you're, you're in the High Performance Center and you're away from home and you want to be a future Olympian, right? Yes. So, in, in, in your mind then, I mean, how do you keep yourself on a daily basis from going forward? Because 
everything is against you. You're a small city boy. You're now in the big city. Well, you know, relatively, Pretoria is an interesting place. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you are your your schedule is is ridiculous. I mean, you are a child star uh, in in many ways because your schedule is not your own. Yeah. Um, you've got this rigorous training regime that you you have to hang out on. You know, how do you acclimatize to all those things on th- those those demands on your time when you're 18, 19? Well, first of all, like at that age, you've got lots of energy. So the schedule, so to speak, isn't that um, demanding because you, it's something that, like if it's something that you enjoy, even if it's very like demanding on you, um, on your physical and your mental, you enjoy it because it's something that you want to do. You invest in your your time into it and your and your efforts. Yeah. So it wasn't. It wasn't um, as bad as certain people make it out to be. Yeah. It all comes down to, is this, like, like, the thing I'm doing, is this my goal? What am I working towards? So if you have something at the end of the tunnel that you want to achieve, then everything else in between just becomes a means to an end until you get to where you need to be. Injury time comes. Dero now realizes you can't continue being a sports star. And you're now looking for other things to, to apply your trade in. You know you're tall, you know you're handsome, as you've said. Um, and many times. <laughs> many times. <laughs> many times you said it. And now you get into modeling. How do you get into modeling from moving from one dream to then changing the dream to getting into modeling? How do I do that? Um, I think it was, like as much as I wanted to do it, it was pure luck. Um, you know the, like how they say that the things, like um, if you think about something enough, then you're telling the universe what you want. Yeah. Uh, like the universe responds to our thoughts. So when I was injured, I knew that this is something that I wanted to do. Did you go back home after you were injured? No, no, I stayed in Pretoria. Okay. I was still in... Uh, I was studying actually, I was doing my degree in construction management and I sent my pictures a couple of times to G3 modeling agency and they didn't respond to me for I think about six months. Wow. So eventually I got fed up and I walked to the offices, I got on the car train, walked to the offices and I walked in their door and I'm like, hey, here I am, you guys keep rejecting my photos and telling me that, oh, this and that and they, they, they actually loved me from the beginning. And they said, okay, we can work with you. And a week later, I had my first shoot. I was booked. Uh, and the rest just, is history. It just kept coming, just kept going. Cosmo's Sexiest Man 2017. Maps Baponyane was Cosmo's Sexiest Man. Jonathan Boynton Lee was uh, um, Cosmo's Sexiest Man. Let's just go into do you enter? Do they pick you? Do they send you an email? Do they call your management? How are you taken as a pool of 15, 20 people to be. On the lineup to be the sexiest men in the land. Okay, I'm gonna go back to what I said just now. Now that the universe responds to what you want, so if you tell the universe that this is what I want, it eventually. Well, I, I don't know, dear, because I tell the universe I'm six foot four every morning, and the universe hasn't come through for me yet. No, that's like, that, that's based on <laughs> genetics. Sorry. <laughs> Damn, mom. Yeah. So I met Maps um, in 2012, and I think that's when he won. Yeah, um, the competition. Yes. So, I, it was something that I thought about. I'm like, wow, I would love to be like on that platform. And then it was just an afterthought. And like now this year, it's it, it's my life. Yeah. But in between, like I said, um, the universe. Yeah. It's very important to realize that the our thoughts shape our reality. So I kept thinking about the kind of life that I want and the yeah. kind of like the, the the quality of life that I want to live. Yeah. And um, so I missed the, the initial casting for Cosmopolitan Sexiest Man of the Year. Can you believe it? When, when this, this particular cycle? Yes. Yeah? I, I actually missed the casting. And so I'm figuring that they weren't really happy with the people who went. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them were dogs. <laughs> yeah. And so they went to the agency and they liked my portfolio and they said okay let's ask this guy if you if he would like to be part of this competition and i was like let me think about that let me my assistant will get back to you oh do you have an assistant i do now <laughs> <laughs> so you lied to them and said to them your assistant will get back to you and then but obviously i said yes uh-huh. like, yeah i said yes i'm in it and um so i want to explain the my cover photo for the campaign yeah like i said universe okay 
I was in a time where I was like hitting the gym hard. Like that was my. Have you always been? Way. Have you always been sort of a well-built gym bunny? No. 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 A protein shake and peanut butter is the thing <laughs> that holds this body together. <laughs> A protein shake and peanut butter. Yes. <laughs> right down. Okay, protein shake, peanut butter. So uh-huh. yes, they was in the gym every day. And so everything just came together. That the time that they asked me to be to be part of the competition was when I was at one of the best peaks of my gymming. Yeah. And a week later we shot and we get to sit and the other guys were kind of ready, like in terms of their body and physique. So when I took off my shirt, everyone thought that I knew about this from the beginning. Oh yeah. I was like, no, sorry guys, I just work hard. <laughs> I just I just eat peanut butter and drink lots of protein shake. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was like that was it for me. And so sort of, then it just came down to a, a bit of campaigning and letting the people choose who they want to be the sexiest man. But um, I've thought about this for uh, once or twice that. Cosmopolitan was looking for, I mean, tall, dark, sexy, handsome guy, you know, with a nice smile, <laughs> nice brown eyes. <laughs> so I just happened to match the description. Oh, he just matched the description <laughs> miraculously. Uh, he had the brown eyes and the smile to go with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I'm interested in, in how that, that move happens sort of on, on, a, on a cosmic point of view, you know, um, not to use the word Cosmo again. Um, but for me, it's, 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 it's very clear that you had already prepared for um, certain instances in your life coming together before you even knew what they were. Yeah. Um, and all of it, I mean, I don't, I don't believe in things happening sort of by mistake or happening to you. Would you say that you had sort of preparing, whether you knew it or not, um, for the journey you'd be taking now? Um, I'm always ready for whatever's coming my way. So I'm always um, getting ready for the next <laughs> stage of my life whatever avenue I might go into. So even now, I'm preparing myself for greater things because I'm on this platform. Um, So that's my recipe, that always be ready for what's coming your way because you don't know, you don't want to be caught with your feet, um, you know, by your by your ankles, which yeah. is a very compromising position. <laughs> no one wants to see you there, if I may, if I may say. <laughs> when you when you're looking at sort of you know your peers, I mean you're you're fairly young, you're in your mid twenties, and uh, you see I don't say your age there. Yeah, yeah, but like he's in his mid twenties. Shout out, shout out. He, he, he could be twenty seven. He could be twenty two. You just need to work it out from there. Um, and and the number of times sort of you know you see people out there in in, in the hood. Um, a radio personality a couple of days ago tweeted that the difference between him and the beggar who. We just drove past was a state of mind His mental disposition uh, you know yeah. and, and and he had a, a whole a whole you know they, they ran him down on twitter they 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 yeah. bring out the, the big guns for that when we saw a guy in a bmw that, re- that was written hobo so. yes well you know there you go hobo big hobo <laughs> uh, mr touch uh, but what i'm trying to get to is you know what what do you think is the issue with 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 our generation uh, especially with guys where we we give up so easily i mean we we want to be in the industry we want to be lawyers we want to be doctors and we but we we only seem to do just the bare minimum um to get us there i mean the number of times i get people emailing me saying i want to be on radio and i ask them you know do you have a demo have you ever done a, a, a voice test do you know what you sound like on, on on, on, a, on, a, on a speaker have you ever worked that out can you you know are you coherent can you think on the spot and they go um uh, well, I haven't yeah yeah so um well for me coming th- coming from Clarkstop which is a you know it's Clarkstop considering it's that a, you come from Clarkstop as well yeah yeah so for me um my view or my perception or perspective on life was like what was as far as the borders of Clarkstop yeah until I found myself in Pretoria, and then I saw life on a bigger scale. I'm like, oh, my goodness, um, there's more out there. Yeah. And then you get to experience different cultures. You see life differently. You meet different people. People who have dreams bigger than you. So that um, can either make you feel small, or it can make you feel like, okay, well, there's more, and I want more. And um, a lot of like young guys my age and younger, or even older, um, they are... Um, perceptions or that their the, the goals and dreams are limited by their surroundings. Yeah. But if you can get yourself past that and start to dream big in a small town, then you're already 10 steps ahead of the guy next to you yeah. if, he's, if he's not doing the same thing. 
So we 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 need to start uh, exposing ourselves to to the what's beyond just yeah. our immediate surroundings. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and I mean also with the world of the internet coming through, uh, you actually have uh, and no you put excuse. yourself out there at yeah. the end of the day. Like you have to. So once you identify something that you would like to pursue, like you you like you um you know as I was having a conversation with a good friend saying that um you you have to stop being normal or the perception of being normal must not apply to you yeah because normal says that you go to school you get a job and then you retire and then you hope to live long enough to spend your retirement money but then you're just a guy like you just become a number you become uh, an afterthought that fades away but if you can think of yourself as someone who wants to be a game changer you know be the crazy one who said that i want to make a difference and like you actually made a difference yeah so it's just about like not um living according to the recipe that was set or is set by society so if you can deviate from the normal already you're on your own lane it's prince kb featuring aubrey on this one with better days it is hashtag man talk hashtag man talk saturdays taking us to exactly 7 p.m central african time don't forget from 11 to 2 a.m central african time it is fomo with my boy bondi mond d um he'll be hanging out with you all the way um i'm, I'm hearing him actually it's so crazy i can hear, actually hear him cringing and me calling him bongi i wasn't saying bongi i was saying mondi but you know because the tongue is tired you know and i've been i've been deep in conversation with cosmo sexiest man it, 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 it just becomes a lot it does become a lot but uh, he hangs out with you on FOMO all the way to 2am Central African time yes and he asked some very interesting questions on, on, on Facebook follow him on Facebook you'll see mm-hmm. Ooh, he'll ask you things he'll ask you so many things but still in the studio with my hashtag man talk uh, his uh, man, hashtag man talk guest uh, Tiro Mosette Cosmo Sexiest Man a model and you were in construction okay so I did athletics while I was still studying construction management yeah um, so I was like the normal, you know, I'm a student, I'm, I'm doing sports. Yeah. And I was relatively good at both. Did you want to be a a, 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 a construction manager? Was it something that you thought you'd be doing? Was it, okay, I mean, so why do it if you know that you've got a, f- a future in athletics slash modeling? So the thing is that um, at that time, at that time of my life, um, well, like how construction came about is that I went to work with my dad for the holidays. Yeah. And he's got like an office job. And I almost killed myself. <laughs> I just, I just didn't see myself um, sitting in an office, never mind a cubicle, yeah, and in front of a computer the whole day. I'm more of a practical person. I like working with my hands, okay, and seeing what we're working on. So, um, construction management. When I googled careers that were practical, was one of, was was like that came up, and I was like, okay, I think I like this, and I researched the career, uh. and I was like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for this. Yeah. So. That's how I got into construction while I was still doing athletics. And then the athletics part of my life ended and then I was still studying and then became a model. So it was a transition between the three. And and, the and, and do you find that, you know, with, 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 with having an office job, you get sort of locked into the, the salary. Was it because you had been out of the world of, of, of um, corporate? So you, were, you, you, you started your, your life as an athlete. So what you knew was abnormal already that being in an office was not something that, you know, you aspire to because I know for, for, for at least with me, you know, I, I went into law because I was like, well, you know, for you to drive a Range Rover, for you to have a house in, on the lake, you need to have a good job and good job equals lawyer, yeah. doctor, accountant. Well, yes, like there's also part of the, 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 well, I mean, the career in construction was, I mean, the salary in construction was um, also a very nice um, incentive to go into the industry because, um, there I saw myself driving my Sirocco GTS or mm-hmm. my Sirocco R, <laughs> Sirocco 1.4, <laughs> white with black rims. Okay, okay. The black window tint. I hope the nice guys of VW are listening. <laughs> <laughs> Brendan Bassett, guys, Brendan Bassett. <laughs> I'm here, I've got a driver's license, <laughs> and I'm a good driver. He says so, apparently. We don't know that, we can't yeah. vouch for him, but he says a good driver. Because, I mean, for me, it's, it's, it's so interesting to see when people get in, and move into careers. A good friend of mine is writing a book right now, and, and it's so interesting that you're here uh, today um, when I had a conversation with her a couple of days ago and she says how difficult it is for people to move from one job to another um, and how it, you go through trauma. Yeah. So as, as a person, you know, you have a bad boss or you hate the industry you're in and you now have to take the very difficult decision of introspecting and deciding to have your life in your hands. Yeah. And most people give that power away to a boss, to a job 
and have all yeah. the excuses. I mean, you know, now knowing that you know you've, you're injured, your safety net is gone, being you know your body that yeah, you were used true. to, um, and you still went back and ventured into the unstable world of modeling, and, and you're doing very well in it. You know, what what was the the the, the thing? You know, what was it? Was it praying? Was it you know visiting the local Sangoma? What made you continue to? Break the mold and chase the dream. I mean, the conversation is about chasing dreams, yeah. um, even when the dreams seem to sort of elude you. Well, it's like first of all, it's family. My family supports everything that I do, and they always motivate me to uh, to to become a better person. Yeah, and it's also the conversations I have with my friends that um, you know, if, if you have friends that always challenge you to do something else, even if you don't want to do it, if they think that yo like this is like you actually look. Like this looks promising for you. Shout out to my boy Clyde Tato. Mm-hmm. He's like one person that has always, you know, um, stayed me in the right direction in terms of like suggestions, and um, most of all, evolving. So, I was in construction. I mean, modeling. So I've got a day job that pays my bills, pays my rent, uh, pays for my gas to work, and everything. It's very stable. I know that at the at the end of the month. I'm getting a love letter or like, a, <laughs> like an, an SMS from the bank that says, well done. Yeah. So 20 days work. Yeah. And then in between, I've got my modeling and I've got castings and then Cosmo came up. So like that kind of, um, that um, like pushed me to the level where I am now, where I found myself for the first time in front of a camera. So that was for me a moment of evolving in my life Yeah. where I felt like, wow, like it was a little bit... Uh, scary at first awkward you know because you know like you're standing in front of camera people are watching you and then you have to talk but that was like that awakened something in me so i went back to site i went back to work and i'm working but i just couldn't like get this idea of something that i want to do like the camera work so that was um uh, like like that's what drives me that as a person you just have to evolve so if you're not evolving it means that you stay in the same spot and there's nothing wrong if you want to do something and stay in it but there's also nothing wrong with choosing to constantly evolve as a person yeah so that's like more or less um, the comfort of, of, of having all those things around you, I mean, we all have these pressures that we, we're constantly fighting against. I mean, how many of them are self-imposed? How many of them are, you know, in your mind? I, I mean, I think about how when I left law, people kept telling me that, you know, you're going to lose your car, you're not going to have the nice iPhone and the title that comes with it. Because, I mean, you're working for a big construction company at the time. And, you know, in 10 years, 20, however long years, you would have been director. Yeah. Uh, but what is, what is what are the things that hold especially our generation back especially with you who's having having dabbled in sport and then gone into corporate albeit being construction and then still decided to come out the other end and leave that behind well um it all comes down to you as a person do do, uh, people well let me start here that our generation wants things now yeah so um a career is able to get you things now because if you work for six months, you can get the car you wanted, uh, you can get a bond, you can get this and that. But going into uh, a certain career that says that um, you you might have to wait ten years before you get the car that you've always wanted, then you're like, um, actually, I'm gonna go back to the safety net of a career. Yeah. Because I don't wanna wait ten years to get that car. I don't wanna wait ten years to get whatever I want. So now you've got your friends. Or people that you know, or people your people your age, your age group that are getting the stuff that you want. Mm. But now, um, it all comes down to um, like materialism, and so it's either you are like driven by materialistic things or you're driven by making a difference. So making a difference sometimes means that you have to let go of materialistic things because. It's very rare that those intertwine with each other. Yeah. Yes. When you go back to to, to Clackstop and you are around your childhood friends and you're seeing all you know the the stages that you guys are in your lives, um, do you do you sort of sometimes sit back and see think that you've done quite a lot? You've done enough. Is there more you have to do to to reach your peers, or is there you know I, I'm a, I'm in my own lane. I don't sort of look left or look right. Well, I feel like um, when I'm back home, I do get a bit of um, recognition from my friends. From yeah. you know, I, I walk down the street, someone says, "Yo, I saw you on on TV." I'm like, "Okay, cool, like, thanks. Uh, can you take a picture?" 
Okay, cool. We do that. So that, like that, to me says that I'm doing something. Okay. Like, so I, I just feel like I've just lit my matchstick. So I'm holding this matchstick with a little flame, and it, it's about to get lit. <laughs> so. <laughs> You're the only person I know who would have gone and used an analogy <laughs> and and get it to be lit. I ask because I mean you we, we you find that on a constant basis you know especially when you come from a small town um, that you 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 always want to and it happens universally you know uh, I look at the people I was in law school with and I'm sitting going damn you know I could have my Range Rover by now I could be sitting on the house in the lake and then you get someone who comes up to you and says hey dude you know like well done on X and Y and Z and and then only then do you prove them wrong that you can actually do this. Yeah. And that, you know, you can't, we all have to, I mean, Morgan Freeman started doing great things in his 40s. Um, Taraji was in her late 20s, early 30s. And it's, it's a different world right there. But let's get to the juice. Are you ready for the juice? Ready for the Are juice. Are you ready for the juice? I'm ready for the juice. Okay. So let's talk about, you know, being Cosmos Sexiest Man must come with some interesting things you know um people want to uh you know uh, especially the ladies they they come to you and um want to be close to you as it were how do you deal with the female attention um well thing is um people are actually kind of scared of me because yeah. of my height and apparently my resting face like <laughs> I, do, I don't look approachable but i promise you if you do come close to me and I smile, like you'll feel very welcome. <laughs> okay. But in terms of the... You're the damn charm of this one. <laughs> Beware. In terms, of, in terms of the the ladies, it's just be, like, just be yourself. Mm. Um, because as Cosmo Sexiest people, like, I don't know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten, oh my gosh, take your shirt off, take your shirt off. Um, but like that's, there's more to being Cosmo Sexiest than just having uh, like a nice body. Yeah. Yeah. So I try my best to um, be sexy outside of the, the conditions of uh, a physical appearance. It, what what uh, is being sexy? Maybe let's ask you that. No, from Cosmo Sexiest Man 2017, what is the definition of being sexy? If Leroy, who's 5'5", five 5'7", five, five I'll let you know. Five um, foot seven. Five, five, yes. I've got, <laughs> I had a growth spurt. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I just want to be like, you know, I, I, maybe I could be Cosmo Sexiest Man. What is the definition of sexy from the current reigning Cosmo Sexiest Man? I uh, mean, it's all about embracing yourself, like um, being the most authentic version of yourself and not trying to copy or imitate um, someone else or something else. And just if you're, if you're a weird person, embrace your weirdness. Yeah. If you're a shy person, um, be shy. If you're a loud mouth, like be loud. And so that's for me like being sexy because you're being yourself, you're being original. Yeah. Okay, so I must be myself. I must be original. I still feel like I need like at least two feet. Like yeah. if I can just be sitting. Like but still go to gym though. Like that, <laughs> like that counts about thirty percent. But how, how much? How much of it is is, you know, the gymming, the you know, being outwardly sexy? Because people don't see the nice person or the pretty smile sometimes in the photos. You know how 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 much of it is actually working on it? I mean, did you always look this way? What did it take to be Cosmo Sexiest Man? Were you a buff young kid? Were you seven and like bench pressing houses? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta <not> ask. <laughs> um, I mean, I grew up skinny. Uh, I was a skinny. But what is skinny? Are you buff skinny or skinny skinny? Like, I was really skinny. Like, I was long and just, you could snap me in two. Yeah, I was also lean. Like, I'm shredded to tuna. So, <laughs> at any time, it looked like if I fell in the wrong direction, it might be over for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's not, like, like, this is hard work. So I'm a I'm a hard work based person. Okay. So your results are based on your input. So yeah, everything that I've accomplished now in terms of my physique was um, a lot of peanut butter, a lot of protein shake, and a lot of bench pressing and squats. Don't skip leg day. <laughs> Never skip leg, Don't leg, skip day. leg day. People will say you're pretty. I mean, it's easy being pretty. That, that's uh, true. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but they'll say it's easy being pretty, so things will come easier for you. So you know, for for someone who's wanted to chase a dream, um, at some point you need to sort of you know take in the 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 facts. Like I know for a fact I will never sing. Singing is not in my future. I can hum sometimes. Uh, my best friend is a musician and she tells me often in the car, shut up. Just, shh. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Sing in your head. 
which breaks my heart because I had, you know, record deals and uh, Grammy Awards in mind, but that's not going to happen. You even had your speech prepared. Dude, I was so ready. I was like, thank you to the, you know... Beyonce prepared. Dude, and I'm going to cry in front of Adele and it wasn't going to work out. But I had to, at some point, realign my, my vision of where I wanted to be. You know, because I just didn't have the raw material. But I mean, I watch Idols. I look at, you know, X Factor. I'm looking at Cosmo Sexiest Man, um, Men's Health, uh, Cover Boy, Cover Guy, whatever it is. And sometimes you just go, but buddy, it's not going to work out. I mean, you know, do, is there no point where you go, mm, I, I, these things work for me and... I need to stay in this particular lane because it's very difficult deviating from it. Because as a skinny Tiro Mosete who, who back in Clark Stop, you know, we, we must see something. We must be like, okay, you know, if you put on like 10 kilograms and you bench press, yeah. we can change that. But obvious talent is a different story. Well, I mean, everyone knows their strengths and their talents. So if you, if you um, try and like try your best to, to um, develop your like those as, as, like the your your specific skill set, and try to apply that to different avenues. Yeah, like you might find that, um, for example, you can't sing. Yeah, or, that's true. But let's say, uh, but you can talk really well. So okay. that's that's one of your skills, and like so yes, you, so you talk really yes. well. <laughs> I talk really well, and that's how I will not get a record deal. But I'll one day get a. What what is what do we? What so you want so so for example you want to get a record deal, but you might host the Oscars because you talk really well. So I might actually get to the Grammys as a host, as opposed to being there as an artist. Exactly. So you just have to realign to your strengths. Yes. See, and it's not just a pretty face. He is. Did I must say to my hashtag man talk is all the way to seven thirty Central African time. But now back into the music. That is your boyfriend's uh, best uh, girl. Her name is Manewa. She comes through with more than you on Trans Africa Radio, taking us all the way to twenty five minutes past the hour of seven pm Central African time. There's news, views, reviews, interviews, and everything you've come to expect this side of the equator. And of course, in studio with my hashtag man talk guest, his name is Tiro Moset. Hello, Tiro. Okay, so Tiro, so while we're off air, uh, something interesting happened. Someone gave us a call. Um, I don't know if you know this person. Hello. Hello, how are you, my boy? I'm fantastic. How are you? Who is talking to me right now? <laughs> Hello? Hi, hi. Who's, who's on the line? Oh, it's Tato. Hey, hi. Tato, how are you doing? I'm good at you. Fantastic. Tato, how do you know Tiro? Um, well, we stayed in the same place in 2014 and we just became instant brothers. Like, he has this thing where, um, you know, he just came into my life and he never left. <laughs> but it's a good thing, though. Um, yeah. <laughs> he never left. He never left. Never left. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you the Tata you were talking about who cons- constantly pushes him to do the most? Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely me. Um, we try and, like, push the boundaries as much as we can, you know, because... We really come from nothing. Like you know, our parents weren't really the well of the most well of people. So I think that's how we can relate. And you know, um, because he's also his dad is based in Rustenburg, so that was just like the the the, the scene that uh, just to prove that we are brothers. So yeah. All right. So, so Tata, talk to me about you know it is that night in February, and he is a named Cosmo sexiest man. Like. What what do you feel like as a friend to Cosmo Sexiest Man? Does he like wingman for you? Do you, you know, when you go to girls, you go, Hi, I'm Tato. My friend is Tiro Musete. He's Cosmo Sexiest Man. <laughs> um, no, I was really happy for him because he works really hard. Like, he's one person who I know, like, is in the gym, like, 2 4 seven, Like, if he wakes up at 5 a.m. and he's like, I'm going to the gym, he's going to go to the gym. So I was, like, really happy for him because he really put a lot of effort and hard work into it. Yeah. So um, yeah, I was really happy for him. But um, as a point, as on the point of the girls part, nah, we don't we still the same. We don't really. I don't really talk to people. But, you know, this was the one place that I, I actually won't be judged. So that's the one thing about him. Like he 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 he's a very he's a rather bad basically. Like he's oh, wow. you're his or you're his boy. Like it's for life. So yeah, that's one thing. Him, yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, it's nice to hear from a friend uh, talking about uh, <laughs> uh, the kind of person he is, and uh, you know, we, we we get to see the pretty boy who's sitting in front of us here, but uh, yeah. we didn't know that he has a, a a big heart as well to go with that 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 big body. Uh, what mm-hmm. what would you like to, to to say to him? What would you like him to know? I just want you to keep going, and you know, don't let the uh, white noise and the little things um slow you down, man. You're blessed. Thanks, big homie. <laughs> How much <laughs> are you paying for that, Tira? <laughs> friendship, <A> friendship payment. <laughs> yeah, no, friendship payment. Yeah, the good news. Yeah. Sorry, Tato. No, I'm saying yeah. That's the only. That's the only payment it is. Like, just uh, you know, the friendship. Like, there's 
there's nothing else. Just having him as a friend is is quite cool and a blessing, really. Yeah. What a man! What a man! Thank you so much, Tato, for yeah. calling in. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Awesome. So yeah, that's Tato saying that you gave him a hug the last time he 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 cried. Yeah, real man. They cry. They hug. They hug. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so on occasion. Hap- on occasion. Yes. Yeah. Seeing you cry at like six foot something, I'd be something to behold. But talk to me. What's happening next? What's going on with Tiro going up? You know, going forward. Well, um, okay. So, in a nutshell, I've I've left the construction arena. Okay. Uh, in the words of a famous friend, I've become a struggling artist. Yes, it's a beautiful yes. place to be. I'm I'm hungry for my art. <laughs> so, um, you know, so I come from a small town. So we we don't have um like media personalities where I come from. We don't have presenters. We don't have actors. Uh, we have had in the past, but it's been a while since someone came out of, um, like came out from the, from my area and, and became, you know, a person. So this way I'm at right now. Um, you know, so I'm trending SA, uh, top billing, you know, SABC, Mnet. There's a there's a um, tall brown young man, strapping with, young man with brown eyes, <laughs> who's very articulate. <laughs> We can do the most, so I'm waiting. He's like a walking PR man. I'm a PR man. Yeah. I'm everything. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it helps that you're good looking. Well, yeah. um, you know, I look forward to top billing uh, to MTV to whatever picking you up. Um, I think uh, we've got uh, a star in our hands, and hopefully, you'll be opening up at uh, Bryan Park in New York Fashion Week in a couple of years. They better do it now before I, I, I get uh, too expensive. Too, too expensive. Aren't we lucky too. we got him before it was too expensive? You know, you could have charged <laughs> us for this interview. Uh, but I mean, listen, this is your home. Uh, you are always welcome. Let us know what's happening with your career um, and keep chasing the dreams. And I think for me, the big thing is um, having role models for people of our generation where people are pushing the boundaries despite whatever happened. Because you're from a small town and you've made it in the big city and you are now Cosmo's sexiest man. I think uh, 2017. 2017. And not half just. of 2018. And a bit of 2018. Yeah, like, like, a bit of 20, like I've still got like enough juice in me to... Uh, push the sexiness for six six months, six, for six, seven months, six months, seven seven months into 2018. Okay, okay. So, so they might have to hold the event next year in July, in Ju- <laughs> next winter. So <laughs> if you want to be Cosmo Sexiest Man, you might have to look out for the entries in next July because they will be holding on to the title for a little bit longer. Thank you for coming through into the studio, um, and I no, look forward you. to seeing your brown. What do you, what do you say? Brown eyes, tall brown young man on With the brown run- eyes. <laughs> Get him out of my studio. <laughs> Get him out of my studio. <laughs> that is our hashtag man talk yesterday. Uh, we're posting up pictures of him in a bit. Um, the short guy next to him, yeah, that would be me. Uh, coming through now, it is uh, time for Yemi Al Alade, Do As I Do, featuring dear DJ Arafat. Of course, this is my favorite one. Uh, this, uh, you know what I love about Yemi? Yemi is like that evergreen woman. She's got that freshness. And when I got to see her at the Mamas last year, woo! Woo, woo, woo! My goodness. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she comes through. It is hashtag man talk, hashtag man talk Saturdays. All the way to 8 p.m. Central African time. Now we pop through with our top 10 to 8, the top 10 of everything you need to know this side of the equator. Let's hit it! Lego. This is Trans Africa Radio.